In this video I am continuing with part 5 of our tapping simulator game series. Today in this Roblox Studio tutorial, we are writing our data store script and learning how to use the Roblox data store service to save data in your Roblox game. This code I am typing is following on directly where we left off in the last video. This is a module script which I called player data and have placed it inside server storage. The code I am showing you today is going to save the number of taps when the player exits the game. This line of code is using set async to save the data from leader stats into the Roblox data store service. If I switch over to our leader stats script, we need to refer to the same name. Here you can see I called mine taps with a capital T. So back in our module script, I need to make sure I write it like this taps.value. This pcall function allows us to check the success and print something. We can also display the error message, which is great when testing your game. That's the save on exit function completed. It won't do anything yet as we have not called it. But before we try that, let's set up the player data first for when the player doesn't have any data in data stores. Also, here we can load existing data. This session data table will hold all the data for each session for each player. Let's create a function to do this. This function will set up player data. But first guys, here's a pro tip. When writing your code out, always check that you're getting to your function first. What I mean is, write a print line and run the game and debug it until you get this line to print. This will make things much easier for you. Just get little bits working first, and then write the code that you want to execute inside the function, once you can confirm that the function is working. Add this line to call this function. Ok let's run this and see if it prints out for us. Yes, ok it printed. Now we just have to write the code inside that function, which will save the data for us. Notice the red arrow here. Please write that line out to access the player data and data store service. Ok, continue writing out the code inside the function as shown. On success, this function uses get async to return the player data. Again, we can print things out here to show us when they are working. And do something if the data was successful, such as add the data to the session data table, which we can use later. If the player doesn't have data yet, that means we can set up the session data for this player so that their data is saved. And if it wasn't successful, we can print a warning to help us troubleshoot what went wrong. Let me show you. See that warning error? If you are running this from Roblox Studio, you need to turn on the API in order to access the data store service. Go to the game settings and click the security tab to turn it on like this. And make sure you click on save. That should work now, let's see if it printed for us. Yes ok, it printed. However, to test the actual saving of the data, you must run the game from Roblox. Because we used set async that only works when running the game from Roblox. Ok, let's click a few times and see if it saves the data. And remember our function was saving on exit. So I'll close the game and rejoin to check it. Ok, I actually have a couple of things I forgot to do here. The first thing is I didn't save the game to Roblox, and I didn't publish the game either. And there is one more thing I didn't do. Do you know what it is? If you answer, we didn't actually load the data yet. Then yeah. That might help. Ok, it's probably saving the data just fine. But our problem is, when I am rejoining the game, it's showing as zero because I didn't load the data yet. Let's add a few lines to our leader stats script, which will load the data for us. This first line lets us access the data store service. Which is handy, as that is where we just saved the data. Write these few lines like this, Notice I am printing again to check it's working. Get async will retrieve the data for this player ID.
Okay, let's run from Roblox to test it. Okay, still nothing. Let's check what printed in the console. Yeah, that's great. It is showing that taps are equal to 6. So the value is actually getting saved. But the problem we are having, is that it's not loading into our leader stats or our GUI. Let's see what we did wrong or missed. Actually sorry. We have only printed out the value of the taps. We haven't actually added the lines of code to load the data into leader stats and our GUI. So let's quickly add this now and it should work. Here, I am checking what the path is to my GUI so I can update the value. In your stat script add these lines as shown. That's the left GUI, let's check it. Okay finally, that's the GUI done. Let's load the data into the leader stats now. Guys, check these few lines where the arrow is pointing make sure you have them. Then write this out. Here, my menu.value is actually the value of the taps from leader stats. You might have a different name than menu, so make sure yours is the same in all places. Let's give it a final run, fingers crossed it works. So to test this. Remember it's a save on exit function. So I'm clicking, and then closing the game. And rejoining the game, to see if the amount of taps is the same as when I left the game. Yes, in both places it has loaded 17 taps. Which is what I just had in the previous game before I left it. So, let's review the final code. Be sure to check this exactly against your code. I am showing you all the final scripts here, and they just worked fine as you just saw. If you are having problems it's likely your syntax, spelling, capitals, etc. That you have incorrect and not the script. Also, check your path to your GUI. So with your GUI make sure it is correct, and the code matches the names and structure of your actual GUI. Guys, great job! Yes, this is difficult. It's a lot to take in. And you won't understand it right away if you are new. And that's okay. It took me years before I understood things properly. My tip is just to try small sections, print things out. Get little bits working at a time. Trying to write these three scripts out all at once is not the best way to program. Instead, you should be checking as often as you can, get that section working and then move on to the next part. This is the God of Coding at Epic Blocks to signing off, see you in the next one.